Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about IPVO Visualizer. It has replaced the IPVO Presenter a while ago, but they've done a lot of updates to it, and so I wanted to do an updated video. Okay, so when I open up IPVO Visualizer, what it does is it allows me to utilize a document camera. And what's fantastic is that it does not have to be an IPVO document camera. A lot of companies are doing that where they're making it exclusive to their product. Um, this has worked with another brand. Right now I am using an IPVO, but it has worked with another brand of document camera. And so that's fantastic that they offer this for free. Okay, so where would you wanna use a document camera? Uh, anytime you would wanna put objects underneath and you wanna be able to write over or just show it, it's a great option for that kind of learning experience. Now, here's the big kicker is that this version also allows you to do a number of other things that I think would be of value. Okay, so right now I'm in large button mode. It just depends on what mode you wanna be in. I'll go ahead and just show you that you can switch the modes. And the menus are exactly the same other than they're just visually different. And so when I look at these menus, uh, I can see the menu over here and you'll notice that the buttons are just a lot smaller. It just depends on what kind of appearance you want or what kind of devices you're using. So when I hit the mode button, what this does is will greatly increase the size of the buttons depending on your scenario. So I'm gonna keep them large here. And when I click on this button right here, you'll see that the same icons that were on the left-hand side in the other mode are now appearing over here. All right, so what I will do is I will start out with some of these different buttons just show you what they do. You can change which camera you are using. Um, you can zoom in on the screen. Zoom does seem to work better in the other mode, but that's okay. I'm gonna click back here. Um, you can rotate the screen if need be, uh, depending on the orientation. Um, you can change the resolution, change the exposure in case you're in a dark room or it's too bright one of the two, there's a nice white balance option, and then you can also adjust the video filters. Okay, so those are some of those buttons that are available. And then something else you can do is manually focus. I tend to use the manual focus quite a bit. I turn off the continuous focus on my cameras just because otherwise they're constantly zooming in and out, in and out and adjusting. I almost feel like it's more productive if I just focus manually myself. If you need some grid lines, you have some grid lines you can use, it just depends on your preferences. And then that has this really cool uh, reading tool so that way you can just use a mouse and you can uh, hover over where the words are in a text so that way students can follow along. What's also kind of cool is when you're in this reading mode, when you click on the screen, it will give you a magnifier that you can move around the screen there. I'll go ahead and turn that off. And then you also have your freeze live image option. So that way you could change objects that are underneath. Or if you wanted to just write over a still picture and take the item out from underneath the camera, you could. I'll go ahead and unfreeze, it'll refocus, and I'm good to go. All right, some other cool options that you have is you can also write directly on it. Now, annotating on this is not as nice as actually just writing on the object. But let's say you're dealing with a book and you don't wanna write in the book. And so that's where this annotation tool is nice. Um, you could have students, if you have a interactive TV or an interactive whiteboard, you could write directly on uh, the object using these annotation tools without using an outside tool. If you're using a touchscreen device, you could write directly on the screen. And so this allows me to mark directly on the objects and actually it isn't even too bad if you're just using a wireless mouse and so you could actually just pass around your wireless mouse in this scenario uh, if i click on the pen settings i can change the colors change the size there's also a producer and i can erase and clear all markings on it just remember of course that when you're writing on the screen if you decide to move the object and you did not freeze it then what would end up happening is your markings do not match up. That's where the freeze option is nice because now I'm moving and you can't tell. All right, I'll go ahead and put that back and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the erase button here, clear all, and that's out of the way. Now this is all in snapshot mode. I'm gonna click on the annotate button so that way you can see my other options. When I click here, you'll see that you have a whole slew of different options. You can screen record, uh, there is a slow motion, there's a time lapse. Those are some fun things you can do. Uh, you can actually scan QR codes. It's kind of nice. Um, you can actually do a text to speech option. So that way you can gather files uh, of 
actual text and it'll pull that in and, and read it aloud. Um, you can scan documents, you can pull in a magnifier, you can also do some stop motion. So lots of different buttons. I'm not gonna go through each one, but I do want to at least highlight that you can screen record. So if I wanted to hit the record button, it's gonna ask me where I want to put this file. I'm just gonna keep it on my desktop here. It's gonna say preparing, and then it's gonna say recording in. Uh, actually, it's recording right now, apologize. And if I wanted to take snapshots, I could. Um, and I can pause at any time. This is nice when I'm wanting to do some instruction and write directly on the page right there and teach. I'll hit stop, I'm saving, and it saves it on my desktop because that's where I put it. All right, if I wanna get back to annotation mode, I'd click on the camera so that way I can see the annotation mode and utilize those tools again. Okay, some other things that might be of interest to you is the settings icon. This is where I can adjust if I'm doing a snapshot, how soon after I press the snapshot do I want it to actually take the picture. I'm going to go ahead and choose close and you'll see when I hit snapshot, it's going to ask me where I want to place it. I'll just keep this on the desktop and it's going to say three, two, one. It's going to take a picture and it's going to take that picture and it's going to place it on my desktop. I look right about here. I see that I have a nice little snapshot. I also see my videos that I had created. There's one there and there's one there that I had messed with before. Let's go ahead and see what else is in here. You can also adjust the recording audio devices. If you want to specify a microphone that you're using, here's the slow motion rate settings, time lapse rate settings that you can adjust. So lots of different settings that you may want to check out. If you don't want camera sounds on your snapshots or focus, you can turn that off. I'm actually gonna turn that off on the focus. And then you can set a default. You can either set it that it always asks you where you wanna put your files when you make a recording or a snapshot, or you can pick where you wanna place it. So that's kind of a nice feature and that might actually save you a lot of headaches. You could create a folder called IPVO. So I'm gonna do that actually right now. I should have done that in the first place. I apologize and I will hit okay. And now every time I try and take a picture, three, two, one, it didn't ask me where I want to put it. Now it's putting it in that folder. Nice of them to pop up with that little icon showing exactly where I put it. Okay, so this is the IPVO visualizer, great resource. I hope that you find it helpful and I hope that you download it and try it out yourself.